Imagine walking in the office the first day of your assignment as a school principal, feeling the excitement, but also the weight of the job. And then imagine looking back a year later and realizing that some of the decisions that you made and the action that you took were doing more harm than good. In today's episode, we're going to explore the three biggest mistakes that I made as a first year principal. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, take a lot of notes so you don't make these same mistakes. And we're going to start right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Emerson here, superintendent of schools and Gallup certified strengths coach and on this channel. We leverage my experience and expertise from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest episodes. All right, everyone, uh, welcome in. And today we're going to do something a little bit different. So I deeply appreciate all of the comments and the feedback, all the positive things that folks are sharing. And your successes are my successes. I'm getting the comments around people getting their next job, people getting promotion, promoted, people getting a job after 20 years doing something different, but now they've got their first teaching job. People have gone for an assistant principal job over and over and over. And you're saying that because of what you heard on this channel, because of something that you heard on an episode on this channel or something that you heard in the comments from another community member, you got that breakthrough. And so I want to go deeper and I want to start to share some real concrete examples of things that I've experienced throughout my leadership journey that I hope will help you, that I hope will give you some additional context. It will help you avoid some of the pitfalls, some of the hurdles, some of the challenges that I've experienced. And so today we're going to talk about one of my favorite jobs that I've ever had. High school principal, big job, complex job, but one of the most meaningful, impactful jobs that I've ever had. And some of the biggest responsibilities that you'll ever have as a school leader is that of principal. But I wasn't a very good first year principal. As a matter of fact, I'll just say it uh, and some of my most veteran teachers who were people who I deeply respected told me that I was not a very good first year principal. So I would agree, thinking about it, looking back, certainly there were some mistakes and I wanna talk to you about those mistakes and I hope that me unpacking that, me sharing that, me being a little bit vulnerable and telling you where I kinda messed up along the way might help you in your journey as well. So get ready, because we're gonna start with mistake number one. All right. So mistake number one that I made as a first year principal that I wish I could take back and do it all over again. And that was thinking that I knew all the answers or had all of the answers. Don't make this mistake. Yes, you are the principal. Yes, you are the leader. You have the positional power. You have the title. But the position in and of itself is not what is going to help you help the school be successful. The position in and of itself is not going to inspire people to follow you. So I would walk into meetings and I would tell everybody what we were doing. I wouldn't invite them into the conversation. One of the biggest mistakes that I ever made was not being collaborative enough, not giving enough space, not giving enough time, not giving enough on ramps and opportunities for people to weigh in for people to ask questions, for people to give feedback. The reality is on any school campus, you as a new principal, you may have been there for literally a day because maybe you came from a different school site, maybe you came from a different community, maybe you came from a completely different district. So recognize that on that campus, you may have professional educators that have been on that campus within that community for 10, 20, 30 years, imagine the amount of institutional history, knowledge, understanding, context that they can bring to the table to help you to have an impactful time as the school principal there, to help you have a successful journey as the leader of the school site. I still believe deeply in my core that people inherently want you as a leader People inherently want me as a leader 
for the most part, to be successful. Your success translates in many cases to their success as well. If the principal is able to be successful, usually that translates to also teachers, staff members, students, especially students, are also being successful. But we as leaders have got to open ourselves up to the realities that we do not have all of the answers. We're not put to be the school principal because we have all of the answers. And that was the mistake that was in my brain. I thought just because I was given this title that now I needed to go and be the smartest person in the room. I needed to be the person who was gonna tell everybody what we were doing. And in reality, as leaders, our job is to leverage the knowledge, the skills, the expertise, and the capacity of other people to help the system run well, to help the system be functional. I'm not sure what happened with the screen back there. But nevertheless, that's what we need to do. So my advice is do not walk in to your school principalship thinking you have all the answers. Go in there with a level of humility. Go in there with a level of, of compassion and understanding and patience. Go slow to go fast. Ask lots of questions. Give few answers and give even fewer directives as a new principal. Empower people to be able to give you guidance, to be able to give you wisdom and insights. So do not walk in there with all of the answers or believing or thinking that you have all the answers or believing or thinking that you have to have all the answers. That's the power of actually leveraging the expertise of other folks is to be humble and say, hey, as your new leader, as your new principal, I'm interested in knowing what you all think. I'm interested in knowing where you all want to go next. Build a shared vision. And I know in a number of my other episodes, I talk about building a shared vision. You do that together. If you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. So focus on flexing your muscles as a positive influence on the campus as the principal, as opposed to being focused on the positional power and authority that's granted to you by the title. That's already there, but now leverage influence. That was the mistake I made in year one, and I learned so much from as I continue to grow as a leader. Don't make that mistake. All right, let's talk about the second mistake that I made as a first year principal, and that was being connected but disengaged. So what does that mean? So imagine, I'm gonna date myself a little bit, but just imagine this. Imagine this administrator walking around campus with a walkie-talkie, a radio, a mic here, um, a cell phone on my hip, an iPad under my arm, a laptop over my shoulder, you know, an earbud in my ear. So I've got all this stuff. I'm connected. Anybody who needs to get a hold of me, there's 17 different devices that they might be able to get to. Oh, don't forget, the, I think I had a Palm Pilot. Again, I'm dating myself. This is years ago. But here's the point. I was connected, but disengaged. So imagine, imagine that a staff member comes to you and they just need your attention, they need your time. But then all of a sudden, the radio is going off. The cell phone is chiming. The email, your Outlook email is dinging because your laptop. So all these different things are your connection points to feel that you know what's happening, that you know what's going on on the campus but what they're doing is they're creating a level of disengagement from the human being who needs you the most in that moment, which is the human being that's standing in front of you, whether that's a staff member, a student, or a parent. And so you can be connected. You can have all of these tools and all of these resources, but at the end of the day, you need to be engaged. You need to be in a space where you can use your eyes and you can use your ears to authentically hear, validate, support whoever it is that needs you in that moment. 
there's going to be space and time where you're going to be doing grandiose things, big speeches, big engagements, rooms full of people where you are going to cast big vision and big ideas and push the envelope on different initiatives that you want to do. But where the rubber meets the road as a school principal is in the one-on-one, -on -one, knee to knee conversational moments that you have with another human being, another individual, where you can plant the seeds of a relationship, where you can develop rapport and connection and trust with another human being. This was a huge mistake because I always viewed myself as a relational person. I came up through the ranks as somebody who had lots of strong partnerships, relationships with my colleagues within the departments that I taught in, the teams that I coached, the coaches that I coached with, always had that. But there was just a, a, a little bit of a misunderstanding of what it meant to go from being a part of that team to then leading that team. And leading that team meant I had to tap into another set of skills, another set of strategies and tactics and resources and abilities that I wasn't, I wasn't aware of in that first year. And so having all of the tools and the resources and all the connections was inhibiting my ability to authentically engage and connect with people. And so don't make that mistake. When there is somebody with you, when there is somebody in front of you, make them the most important person in the room in that moment. This builds a level of engagement. This builds a level of trust. It builds a level, a level of connection. And again, most importantly, it builds a high level of trust. It builds a high level of dedication when somebody knows that you're there for them, and that you're validating who they are, what they're bringing, and you can help support them and solve a problem that they may be having in a moment. Because remember, at the end of the day, our job is to lead, but also many times our, our chief job is chief problem solver. Chief problem solver, make, make sure you know and you understand that. But again, the reality is make the person in front of you in that moment the center of the conversation, the center of what's happening. Get out, get rid of all those other distractions. That was a huge mistake that I made that I know better and I don't make that mistake anymore. And that's mistake number two. All right, mistake number three that I made as a first year principal and that mistake was focusing on process and not the people. People are the quintessential part of the job. And I was more focused on like, how do we build these programs? How do we build these systems? But all of the programs and the systems were operated, organized and led by people. And so the real job of building those programs and systems was building the people who were leading those programs and systems. Because as a principal, your job will not be to run the programs and the systems, but it will be to lead, inspire, and support a series of people who are leading those programs and those systems. So the mistake I made was we knew that we had some challenges. When I got assigned in uh, my school as a principal, uh, we had student achievement goals that we needed to make. We had organizational challenges that we needed to fix. There were a number of things that I was tasked with by the superintendent to go in and fix within the school. Now, I didn't feel that the school needed to be fixed, but it was a directive that was given to me that these were things that needed to happen. So I began to focus in much, much. So I began to focus and put way too much energy on fixing the programs and forgetting that the people were the most important component of this. People who felt a little bit disconnected, people who felt that they were somehow being uh, blamed or shamed in some cases for what was happening with and around the school. And unfortunately, because I wasn't focused on them and I was focused more on process and program, I actually validated some of the, some of the issues that they, they felt that they felt that they were being disconnected. They felt they were being disregarded. And so it took some time to really think about what am I gonna do better and different? Let me talk about what I did. 
because I didn't figure it all out until I stepped back and I reflected at the end of the year and I started to plan for the second year as the principal. And what I realized was that I needed to reboot. So what did I do in year two? I humbled myself and I tried to recalibrate. I tried to step back. And one of the things that I did was on the very first day where our staff came back for the start of our next school year, I stood before the entire faculty and the very first things out of my, the very first words out of my mouth were, I apologize for last year. Last year I made a bunch of mistakes, but I've thought about it, I've reflected, and I wanna get better. And I wanna do these things better and different. That was hard because to, to humble ourselves, to again admit you don't have it all figured out, to then focus on what was really important, which were the hearts and the minds of the students and the staff, that takes some humility and that takes some leadership. And that leadership lesson that I learned about humbling yourself, apologizing, recalibrating, stepping back, and then again, inviting and empowering the staff to say, let's do this work together. It's one of the most powerful things that I learned as that first year principal. And then going into year two, recalibrating, rebooting, and then we were off to the races. We built programs, we built services, we built connections, we won championships. We did world-class work as a school community that I'm still proud of to this day, more than a decade later, nearly three, four districts removed. I've moved on from that particular district, but I still have friends, very, very close friends who are still leading programs and services at that same school. And I know that the things that we did those years ago laid the foundation for those programs, those services, and those excellent outcomes that they're getting today. So what I want all of you to think about is when you're given a leadership opportunity, and leadership opportunities can manifest themselves in so many different ways, not just principal. There's a lot of different leadership opportunities. Focus on being somebody who's open, ready for the ideas, ready for the insights, and ready for the wisdom of the people in that system. Focus on being authentically engaged and connected to the person in front of you in that moment. Give them the respect, give them the honor of being there in the moment to connect with them, to hear their needs, to support them in solving or rectifying whatever the issue or the problem is that they may be dealing with. And at the end of the day, very similarly, focus on the people. When you focus on the people that you lead, the people that you serve, I saw something interesting the other day, and it's a bit of a segue, but I saw something interesting that said, the further you move up, <clears throat> let me start that again. The further that you move up in an organization, the more people you serve. It does not say the higher you move up in an organization, the more people serve you. The higher levels of responsibility that you're given give you more hearts and minds to nurture, to support, and to care for. So think about always focusing on the people, the people that you serve, the people that you are there to connect with. This is the core, and this is what I learned. I mean, as bad as I was as a first year principal, I, could, I probably should have gotten fired. I'm, thank goodness I didn't. But, but then learning and then growing. And I think having that moment of humility all those years ago unlocked something for me that then helped me be successful as a principal, be successful as a director, be successful as an assistant superintendent, and now be successful as a superintendent. So whatever your goals or aspirations are, whatever leadership opportunities you wanna pursue, think about focusing on building your leadership skills and capacity. And if you wanna know more about building your leadership and building your capacity and building your ability to be that inspirational, transformational type leader, 
check out this next video because it's going to continue to build your skills, your knowledge, and your capacity to help you be the best educator and the best educational leader you can be. We'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everyone.